subscribe and ring the bell to never miss an update. Today on Lady Mary Bath, we are visiting the Nashville Glass Show and Sale, hosted by the Astoria Glass Society of Tennessee. Come along for some antique and vintage treasures. Welcome to the Nashville Glass Show and Sale. There's so many beautiful things that await. Let's go take a look together and see what we can discover. It's a pleasure to be here at the Tennessee Glass Show and Sale in Nashville. And I'm here with Larry Duke, who has set up some beautiful punch bowls to show us how to use them in our everyday decor and entertaining. Thanks so much for the invitation, Larry. Thank you for coming. You've got a beautiful Fostoria punch yeah, bowl here. Yeah, this is a Fostoria punch bowl, and the name of the pattern is American. So we used it as a decorative for the 4th of July the decorations. It's certainly a pattern that we all know and love that we've seen on the channel before. And I know many of you have acquired this in the secondary market and utilize this in your home and decor. The Fostoria Glass Society of Tennessee is hosting a presentation the first day of the glass show. And they will tell you all about punch bowls, the many different uses. And it's really a staple in tabletop. And I think if you don't have a punch bowl, that's something you should consider. And this one is set for a wedding. Look at that from the Ellie Smith Glass Company, the Daisy and Button EAPG. And this larger swan is actually a punch bowl. And just a touch of greenery makes it a beautiful centerpiece. And this is a bit older for Fastoria, around 1911. And my new friend Larry Duke has about 35 punch sets. Many of these he has brought to the show today. And this has got to be my favorite, Fostoria, in the Baroque pattern. Punch bowls are certainly for all seasons, and Larry's going to show us this fabulous punch bowl. This is a Westmoreland punch bowl. It's called English Hobnail, uh, and I fixed it for Easter with this festive bunny and eggs. That certainly gives me some ideas. So many beautiful punch bowls, many of which are from Larry Duke's personal collection. I think he said he has 35 punch sets. And that swan is exquisite. And I'm learning a lot today. You know, I, I fill a punch bowl. I've used mine as a centerpiece, especially with the Christmas ornaments. But to actually build up and add a topiary and create height, I think that that is genius. And I'm so glad that I have learned so much today from the show. And that's yet another reason to look for your local glass shows because it's not just about acquiring things, it's about learning how to use what you already have as well. How about some LED candles? I like the use of the doilies, that gives me some ideas. It really dresses it up. And especially for a shower, there's so many different ways you could make it a little bit frilly and feminine. And now for our favorite season of the year, Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, this is an uh, Indiana glass punch bowl filled with uh, Christopher Redco uh, shiny bright ornaments. Nothing can be prettier than shiny bright ornaments in a punch bowl. And it's also so easy to... Just pile them in there. Yes, an easy Christmas idea. And I never would have thought to put ornaments inside of the punch cups. Absolutely creative and wonderful use of what you already have in dressing up your table. That's from the Indiana Glass Company. Here's a federal glass, the Yorktown pattern from about 1960. I guess you could say that's about mid-century. And a doily underneath if you don't have the platter. Here we've got winter wonderland with the snowballs, very simple and yet effective. I can see that on a buffet as well. And look at this, it's almost like it's on fire. Absolutely stunning punch bowl. I've never seen one quite like this. That's the imperial glass there. And a cake pedestal on a pedestal plateau. Brilliant. Isn't that absolutely stunning? And we can't forget about fall. This is certainly something that you could achieve at home with your punch bowl. 
This is, we just got it filled with beaded fruit and it can go year round. It isn't necessarily a holiday. And it's, um, this one is a Fostoria punch bowl. It is called Roseby and it was first uh, manufactured in 1910. So many of these punch bowls were over 100 years old that are sitting right here. Yes. And so many of these you can find on the secondary market. So be sure to keep an eye out for these punch bowls when you are thrifting. And some of them are right here in this room. That's right. <laughs> This is a small version of the Sweeney Punch Bowl. It's one that's housed in a museum in Wheeling, West Virginia. And the one that's quite famous was five feet tall, 225 pounds, and placed on a grave. And now it's housed in a museum. And I love that they feature something from the yard. Isn't that easy? Just pull some pine cones and add pops of color. And the cobalt. Oh, I could just see that for every day in just about any room of the house. And that's made by Cambridge Tally Ho. This is a French antique punch bowl, and the manufacturer is unknown, but it's definitely quite something. And that hobnail by Fenton Glass is absolutely my favorite. I have seen it also in pink, and it goes for about $1,000 a set on eBay. And that is definitely something I can see for parties, celebrations. And that opalescent really adds to it. Look at that ruffled edge. It is quite something, and it's hard to find it complete with a pedestal base. And you definitely want to buy a punch bowl at a glass show if you're looking for something that is rare. Here's a Mosser miniature punch bowl. Because they will have it in perfect condition and all the pieces and parts, and they will also share some of the history with you. And here they placed a swan inside the punch bowl. I'm going to need to remember that because I'm now collecting swans. I just got my Waterford Crystal Swan in from Shop Goodwill. And here's an overview of the show. The vendors are almost complete with their booths. And now we get to take a tour. I see some jadeite. It's quite a warm welcome here. They are full of good information and ready to greet you and help you with your selections. This would be a great addition to my baskets. I do feature these in some of my segments with silk florals and so many different ways to use them. Look at that, a rimmed soup and jadeite. I can't say that I've seen that before, $145. And I'm sure the collector came in and made a good purchase. Lots of different glass here that spans the ages from depression glass, elegant glass, the depression era, and of course, mid-century, we're going to see some of that as well. Love sandwich servers. So many different uses for these. You could feature them in practically any room of the house. And Imperial Glass makes one of my favorite items that's on my wish list. This is the Cape Cod pattern. They also make it in the candle wick. And you line the platter with candles and place the cake in the center. And wouldn't that be great for celebrations? It's hard to know when to start. And I guess I'm really glad that the show hasn't opened and I can't make any purchases because I think I would fill my suitcases. That's a really neat vase. Cambridge, no surprise. They made some beautiful items over the years. And wouldn't you rather fill that with beautiful flowers and give it to a friend than just a florist vase that they'll throw away? That's something they'll always remember and you will have a lasting gift. Oh, I just love the blue. This is from the Cambridge Glass Company and it is the Caprice pattern. And that compote at $55 would make a great gift. Look how the light hits it. You definitely would be giving something memorable. And this basket is interesting. I've never seen anything quite like it. And that would be a great addition to my basket collection. Let's see if we can learn about it. $55 at great price, and it's high Z. Usually high Z items have a diamond H molded on the underside. That's how you can tell that it is high Z when in doubt. You can find great gifts at a glass show and something that has a little bit more interest than maybe a bowl you buy at a box store. This is a coin bowl with some beautiful designs here and it's ten dollars you can fill that with fruit and gift it to someone or give it as is it's a delightful gift and you'll notice these blue plates here i think this would be a great addition to a dinner setting perhaps you have some white dishes you need to add a pop of color 
And wouldn't this be great? These are the Meadow Rose plates in the blue and they're all different sizes. So think about that when you notice that there's a glass show going on, you could find some great ideas for your dinner table. And this is a first for me, a high Z plantation, wait for it. Do you see the pineapple? Yes, this is quite the piece. So many different uses for this bowl. You could even place maybe the draped lady inside. And now that is another item I've added to my wish list. The Heisey Plantation Footed Sitter Piece. And that's what I love about the glass shows. You have so many different manufacturers represented and also different patterns. Take a look at this. This is the Trojan. And that's something that I don't think I've seen before either. And it was made by Fostoria. The Viking glass, rainbow glass, so many different companies represented here in the mid-century. And if you haven't heard of rainbow, it was actually made in West Virginia up until 1973. And of course, hand blown in an array of colors. I'm not a mid-century girl, but I'm starting to really like this glass. I think that could be for just about any decor, just to add one pop of color. Aren't these fantastic? You don't get the variety if you just shop an antique store. You don't have all of this together to learn about the history of it, the different assortments. And look at all these colors. You have the same item in a rainbow of colors. And I actually picked this up at a garage sale in the Topaz. And I feature this in the fall. And it is made by the Viking Glass Company, $48.50. I think I paid $10. And, you know, I wasn't seeing it around other beautiful items. I wasn't quite sure of the value, but now I've learned a lot more about mid-century glass. And how about some Pyrex? There's an item here that you'd be very surprised is hard to find. Let's look at some of these patterns. And the different vendors have lots of knowledge on the patterns. I think it's hard to keep up with it all. The butter print is one I've seen, but I didn't know the name. And it's nice to get a complete set. And those are refrigerator boxes. That's back before we had Tupperware. And if you're collecting a certain style or color, this is a really good opportunity. I didn't know that they made salt and pepper shakers. And there's one item that's really hard to find. I've never seen it before. It's a chip and dip. And the reason it's probably hard to find is that the metal might not have stood the test of time. $185 in the turquoise. So if you ever see one of these out, uh, might be something you should pick up if you're at a thrift store. The vendors come from all over to exhibit their wares and they do a great job of packing everything carefully so that you can find it in pristine condition. This has to be the most interesting compote I've ever seen by the Cambridge Glass Company, $175. And they do have some more in that collection. Let's take a look at these glasses. I have to say they remind me of the Baccarat Vega collection with the brilliant colors. Of course, the base is a bit different. And they're $360 each for the Baccarat Vega. Waterford glasses are $100 a piece, and these are $95. I think that's a deal. Wouldn't that be a beautiful table set with all of these ladies? It's definitely a first for me to see that collection. And there are just so many neat things. I have not seen a sandwich server quite like this one. I'm wondering if it's hand painted. It's possible. And the opalescent, we'll see more of that in a bit. So many great gifting opportunities here as well. This is part of that heirloom glass and I can't wait to tell you more about this. And this is quite the iconic look. I feel like I have this maybe in another color. Very familiar, 95. And my favorite EAPG cake stands. You know, before we had the three-tiered servers, we used to stack the antique cake plates. My mother did this for parties and it was such fun. A lot more flexibility than just having one piece that you can't move the parts. And these really are affordable. And that's something to think about if you're making something homemade for a friend, you could pick up an EAPG cake stand. The pictures are incredible. Let's take a look at these. The Lotus Pitcher, 125 with the glasses. I think that's a really good price. If the show had been open, I would have bought this and shipped it home. 
And for every day, I can see lemonade in this gyro pattern from Cambridge in Moonlight Blue, which I just adore the shade. Imperial Glass, also at 150 for the set, I think is something to consider when you're at the glass show. Look at that detail. I just can't get enough of these. What an exquisite gift that would be to yourself or someone else. If you have a birthday coming up, you're at the glass show, then, you know, treat yourself. New Martinsville Glass Company. You don't see too much of this and the Oscar pattern with the silver overlay and that wonderful blue. And here's our favorite Fostoria cake stand in the American pattern. I just love the square shape. I have several of these that I use often, especially for pineapple upside down cake because it is square, $145. And you know, this one's been taken care of. This pattern was actually introduced by Fostoria in 1915. And it's sort of known as a block geometric style. It was discontinued in 1988. So many different pieces you can find today. Some more beautiful picture sets. I love the cranberry, but I think I prefer that opalescent swirl with the cobalt handle. Pitchers are pretty impractical, as you know, I've featured these in the past, and it really makes a great gift too. And they're not that expensive here at the glass show. Anywhere from $100 to $150, you have a pitcher and a set of glasses. This is the gyro optic. Isn't it gorgeous? Such a beautiful gift too, if you're looking for something like that. And uh, keep this in mind when you're out shopping. And now we get to see some more beautiful glass. This gentleman here that you see has written some books on Fenton glass, and he's quite the expert. And I see some hobnail Fenton with some opalescent touches. Look at these beauties. I can't say that I've seen the green too often. And speaking of green, look at this sandwich tray. I have never seen one in the oval shape. Usually you see round, maybe square occasionally. That is quite something. I wonder if it's Vaseline glass. I'm thinking that it could be. And this vintage cake stand I actually picked up somewhere along the way that I feature in my kitchen with a small cake dome and I keep cookies underneath that. The Cambridge Ball Pitcher. Oh, I absolutely love this cobalt. My mother had this piece and actually gave it to me for a birthday gift one year and I enjoy using it. I just love all the different shades of Fenton glass. The ruffled edge is especially interesting. And here is Mr. John Walk, the author of many books on Fenton glass. He's quite the expert. And you will see, as we look inside one of his books, the photos would have been taken from his collection. He is certainly the authority on Fenton, and I will include a link in the video description for his books. If you want to reach out to him, maybe have a question on Fenton glass, or maybe you want to purchase some of this beautiful blue Fenton hobnail. Love that sweet basket. I'm thinking you could even use this for mail. You know, if you're trying to find many different purposes for it other than fruit or something beautiful to present, or you could place handkerchiefs inside. I can see that in a bedroom or a bathroom with a guest towel and some soaps. And there's that wonderful American Fostoria pattern again with the punch bowl, including the pedestal piece, which I really like. Makes it extra special. And if you're looking for a punch bowl, this one really is a practical one. It lends itself to so many different looks. Love the pops of color here. The glass show really is a happy place. You walk in and of course everyone's friendly, but then you get to see the beautiful glass. You get to learn about the history of it and make a good purchase. This is an interesting Westmoreland cookie jar. I've never seen this before, $175. Let's take a look at that detail with the cherries. Wouldn't it look great in a kitchen? You don't have to keep cookies in it necessarily. Or it could be a centerpiece with florals. Oh, I just love that. And I'm all about birds when I decorate, even setting a table. I like to add some touches of nature and that would be a nice piece at $65. Love that robin's egg blue. This is a cake stand that is very hard to find, the Fenton, with that touch of green. It's known as Silver Crest, and it came in different colors, the yellow, blue, 
green and perhaps pink, $250. I saw this at shopgoodwill.com and I was bidding on it, but when it went up to 200, I decided they were probably wanting it more than I needed it at the time. And it probably goes for way more than that. So that's a really good opportunity to pick up the green. I do like the blue and the yellow is nice too. I can see that even with blue dishes on the table to place that as a complimentary color. Love that cranberry. I'm looking at this picture right here that is sort of watermelon glass, I call it. $395. I would say that is rare. It's not something I've seen before. Isn't that fantastic? It probably had matching glasses originally. That looks sort of art deco. And each vendor brings something different to the table. No pun intended. And this picture is exquisite. I gifted that to my friend Margaret some time ago. I hope that she is still enjoying it. The Cambridge Draped Lady it comes in so many different sizes and colors. I have this in clear and blue. It's actually a flower frog. You can place it in the center of a console bowl or any type of vessel that will hold water for fresh flowers, or you can also use silks, which I've done. And that is quite something. It will definitely be a topic of conversation as a centerpiece. And I'm not seeing the lamps that are draped lady. That's really interesting. So many different colors here and styles. I just can't get enough. It's like Christmas. And there's some more Fenton hobnail in that opalescent blue. Let's take a look at that. $125. That is a very good price. I think you pay a lot more online when you find it. And that bowl I think is so purposeful. You could do so much with it. And $50, that's a great price. And the cordials are extra special. Not every manufacturer made the cordials. And if so, they probably didn't make as many since more people would gravitate towards the goblets and the ice beverages. And this one at 195 is rare and extra special. This is a centerpiece that's missing the base. We gifted this to my father one year and we set the table with cranberries on the base and candles and he admired it and we let him know that was his surprise. I found it in Arkansas and was traveling for Waterford Crystal at the time and I shipped it home in bubble wrap and an ice chest on the airplane and it made it home safely. Some EAPG, Early American Pattern Glass, with the heart design. Wow. These are quite rare, I will tell you. That's not a pattern you see very often. Quite a find. And look at this pink milk glass with gold touches. I love the gilded look. It's the keyhole pattern. I have these in clear. They're certainly not as special as these. $250 for the pair. I think it's harder to find the pink glass. Not so much in depression, but more in the elegant glass of the depression era. And what a set that would be. Another beautiful punch bowl, a sandwich tray with the handle. That's, I just love this. I think every household needs one. And here's another Cape Cod Imperial Glass Company candle holder cake plate. I hope I find one of those. And look at these stunning blue candle holders. There's just such beauty here. I hope that you can find a glass show in your area. I just can't emphasize enough what a wonderful experience this is. And this is sort of a patriotic nod to the American glass companies. Such a rich history, West Virginia, Ohio, and other states. Red, white, and clear. And here's some lemon reamers. The sun kissed are really hard to find. I have the green depression glass in the clear and these are highly collectible. I've not seen one in the blue before. That's really special. $150. And I wonder if that was a promotional item and the jadeite. That's for grapefruit. Do you notice that the center is much larger? 350, that must be rare. Oh, I love that blue and some mid-century glass. Oh, I just love it. It's like a flame. Wouldn't that add some pizzazz to your decor? 
That is quite something. And it's highly collectible now too. Some more pink opalescent. That's really something unusual I have never seen out in antique shops, thrift stores. 235 for the pair is worth it for something so rare. $75 for this console bowl. I can see the draped lady inside. Love this. And I would say this is a fancier sandwich tray than most. And think about it, when you're shopping for a Christmas gift, birthday gift for someone, you go to a box store and you probably spend $50 or more for something that's not that exciting. And you could give someone really something memorable that they could use and has a bit of history with it. Or you could go one step further and actually include a bit of the history. And the Fenton Glass Company had artists that hand painted. I do have a compote that I found at Goodwill and I shared that on social media and it's signed by the artist. And that's lovely on a tea table. Some more of that opalescent. I wonder would you prefer the pink or the blue? I would love to hear from you in the comments below if you can share with me what you prefer or if there's a type of glass that you collect. Would love to hear more about that. This is the largest collection of Fostoria heirloom that I've ever seen. And it comes in so many different colors. The Bittersweet and Topaz, which were the two most popular at the time. I prefer the pink, green, and blue. And look at that beautiful opalescent. And in the case, we have some salt and pepper shakers, toothpick holders, a gavel. That's interesting. And I wanted to showcase these $50 for the salad server set. My mother had these in ruby glass. And they're harder to find because they get broken easily since they're in use. And that's a real find. Look at all of this heirloom glass. Isn't that just exquisite? It's nice to really learn more about the story and to see it together rather than just one piece. And these are a showstopper. I would definitely put these in my car if I could, but I'm flying. And the show is not yet open. But maybe I will catch them in Houston in August. And maybe they'll still have it. Absolutely stunning. I think these belong in the White House. Look at all these different shades. I really like the green too. These high Z candlesticks would surely dress up your table and the candelabras behind me are absolutely stunning. That's something to look out for when you go to a glass show. The Cambridge statuesque glasses, I think, are just fabulous. They're made around 1930 or so and um, definitely fits that sort of art deco era. Cambridge Cobalt Nude. They're also known as statuesque and quite elegant. And in the pink as well. Look at that. It's really one-stop shopping if you're adding to a collection. And these, of course, are much more expensive. The pink being probably rare. And this blue opalescent seashell set is intriguing. I'm thinking that's a salad set, dessert. And the Cambridge relish dish, I consider it a three-part server. That's how I use mine. And a very old world look. And there's the Cambridge Rose Point, which is the number one pattern. And the Caprice from Cambridge. Absolutely love this. I have four glasses that I acquired very affordably. I think $1.50 each at a thrift store. And these candle holders are calling me. That's the neat thing about the glass show is every booth has something so different, unique, you haven't seen before. And the pink. That definitely brings me joy. I have a large collection of pink and green depression glass. However, this is elegant glass of the depression era. And some more beautiful pictures. Make sure to take a look at the picture segment that I featured with lots of different uses. And this pattern right here is the Fasturia June. Comes in different colors. And the ribbon is so pretty in that design. I just love it. Keep an eye out for that when you're shopping. Imperial Candle Wick was made from 1936 to 1984, and it is a classic pattern that brides chose often in the 60s. This is a dinner plate that could actually be great for luncheon, and a salt cellar. You're probably thinking, what would I do with a salt cellar? This makes a great nut dish or perfect for dipping sauces. 
The Prussian glass is becoming popular again. It was made in about 1930. Some of the items were actually premium, which means that they were kind of a gift with purchase in oatmeal or flour. This is the Miss America pattern. My mother had a few pieces in clear. And I just love Depression Glass because it's just so practical and it can be very pretty here. For example, with the square base, the sherbet dish. And it was made in yellow, blue, green, pink. And by many different manufacturers as well. These pictures are more elegant glass of the Depression era. See all that detail? 165 and 375 for the green. I don't have any of the blue, but that's something that I could possibly add. I do recognize a lot of these patterns that I have, the green and the pink pictures. And the milk glass pink punch bowl is perfect for parties. Can you see that for a bridal shower or a baby shower? And it has a pink ladle. How about that? 295 with the original box. And glass companies actually made figurines. You probably don't think about that so much. We're more focused on tabletop, but there are some collections. And you might think this is the draped lady flower frog, but no holes are in it. That's more for decorative purposes. And you could certainly incorporate that into a centerpiece. And that cobalt is fabulous. And some of the carnival glass. It reminds me a bit of the mid-century glass with that orange look. It's very invigorating. I like those colors, very warm and welcoming. Martha Stewart made jadeite popular again, if you remember when she started her online, originally catalog store. And it's definitely a staple for the kitchen. Not necessarily more the elegant look, but practical, made by Fire King. And this is a beautiful display, more jadeite than I've seen in one place ever. The Imperial Glass Company made Candlewick, and I think this is such a classic look. It's timeless and goes with just about anything, and you can dress it up or down. That plantation cake stand. Oh yes, this is definitely on my list. An etched glass adds much elegance to a table setting or can stand alone. Could just have one item, such as a pitcher. And that type of beauty we just don't see anymore in new items. That's why I really gravitate towards the vintage, the antique. And in the South, we would consider this probably the most important glass, the ice beverage. Usually it's a goblet, but here in the South, that's something that we would use more often. And the etched roses are perfect for a tea table, very feminine. And I think I have a few pieces in this pattern as well. I need to pull those out and use them. The Versailles console bowl probably had originally uh, matching candlesticks. Thanks for coming along today with me for the Tennessee Glass Show, where you too could find something as beautiful as this Fostoria Versailles piece to fit the draped lady. Thanks again for joining Lady Mary Bath. Elevate your everyday with vintage glass.